in the Bible. Wow. And there are over 1,700 ifs in the Bible. If we can confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that he rose from the dead, died on the cross, rose from the dead, you shall be saved. There's 1,700 ifs in the Bible, and a lot of them are tied to the 7,000 promises. They're unconditional and conditional promises. But one of the beautiful things about Resurrection Sunday is Jesus kept his word. He says, if you put me down, I'll rise back in three days. God keeps his word. Come on. God keeps his word. Russell Moore said... The resurrection of Jesus Christ not only reverses the story of Adam, I love this, but he reverses our story as well. This is, this is really philosophical and theological both. 
He says, he's the author of the everlasting man. He says, one third on the third day, the friends of Christ coming at daybreak to place to the place found the grave empty and the stone rolled away. In varying ways, they realized a new wonder. But even they hardly realized that the world had died in the night. And what they were looking at was the first day of a new creation. And in a semblance of the gardener, God walked again in the garden. Not in the evening like in Genesis, but in the cool of the dawn. He walks in the garden again. Mistaken by Mary as the gardener, Jesus has played the part of the gardener in our lives all in so many different ways. The first Adam sold us out. The second Adam, which is Christ, brought us back to redemption. And paradise that was lost in Genesis is now restored through Christ. How many are glad for the resurrected Lord today? God walked again in the garden. Man was taken out of the garden. Now we're being we're going to be placed back in the garden. How many are glad for that? Some of us like gardening. My, my wife loves working in the garden. Flowers. I know Nancy Lee's got her garden going already out there. God is very much like our gardener. Think about that. Bill O'Reilly was quite an author and is quite an author and he's written a series of books on killing Lincoln, killing Kennedy and he did one on killing Jesus. I looked through the book. He's a very astute writer, very great writer, really is. But the killing of Jesus is really a misnomer. Took me a while to come up with that word because I haven't used it in many years. And as we were typing this, Joe and I were working on it, how do I describe this killing Jesus thing from Bill O'Reilly in his book? And it came to me, a word I hadn't used in an awful long time. It's not quite true. Not quite true. Yes, the religious leaders wanted Jesus dead. They had tried on different occasions to make that happen. But the Romans carried out the brutal execution of Christ, killing Jesus. But the truth is, Jesus says, I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man takes it from me. I said, Jesus said, no man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it back again. Jesus was the supreme willing sacrifice, giving himself as a ransom for many. There are seven places in the New Testament, not in your notes, but seven places in the New Testament where the phrase gave himself for. He gave himself for us. How you... I, I, that's why we can say hallelujah today. Yes. Amen. You can't kill God's love by killing Jesus. That, that, that just came to me as a phrase as I was working on this message. You can't kill God's love by killing Jesus because, and we just sing that today, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I love that. You can't kill God's love by killing Jesus. Because he gave us his son. He gave us his son to die on the cross for our sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. By the cross and the resurrection, Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. I said by Jesus and the cross and the resurrection, Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen 
and you are overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen and the angels are rejoicing. The power of the cross is the power to save. The power of the resurrection is the power to raise. If Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, you can get out of bed with the resurrection power of God. And every day, victory in Jesus. The risen Christ is a demonstration of God's mighty power. There is a prayer that Paul gives us in Ephesians 1. We'll just focus on 19 and 20. But it is a prayer you can't live without. It is a powerful prayer. And he goes off in verse 19 of Ephesians 1. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power available to us who believe God according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now in that verse 19, it's a, not too long of a verse, but in that one verse 19, Paul uses four different Greek words for power. You know, would think, just use the word power in the Greek, but he chooses four Greek words in a very brief one verse. Verse 19. And I broke it down for you. Dunamis means residential power, residual power, like a dynamo or dynamite. Translating greatness of his power in verse 19. Energia means power translated working. Ichus, not ichthus, but ichus. Endowed power or ability, translating mighty power. Kathos, dominion, authoritative power, translated mighty. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of power in one little verse. Paul says you can't live without the power of God in your life. Very powerful, very powerful. Go to the back of our sheet. Here I have listed the power of the Son, the power of the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrection. I'll line it up for you. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down again. We'll repeat that from the first page. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it again. The power of the Son. The power of the Father. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power? The power of the Holy Spirit. And He declared to be the Son of God with power by the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. We need the power of God's Son in our life. We need the power of the Father. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad for the power of God that gives us what we need to live for God? To follow Christ. The power of the resurrection is amazing power. There, there is no hope apart from the resurrection. We're all spiritually dead from, the, from our sins all spiritually dead, but were raised to new life. Ephesians 2, 1. You hath he quickened is a resurrection term. You hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sin. Resurrection power is amazing power. Resurrection power good news is available power. God has made resurrection power available to all of us who believe. The same power that raised Christ from the dead, Romans 8, 11, the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And we need that power, don't we, to live for Christ. The risen Christ is the object of our faith. If you confess with your mouth, there's one of the 1700 ifs. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord 
and in your heart believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The risen Christ is the assurance of our justification, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The risen Christ is our answer to every accusation. How many knows the enemy of our faith wants to accuse you every day? I said that the risen Christ is our answer to every accusation. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ? That's a big no. Who then will condemn us? Christ? No. Somebody say amen. amen. For he is the one who died for us and come back to life again for us and is sitting in the place of the highest honor next to God, pleading for us there in the heaven. I'm here glad 24-7 Jesus is pleading for you before the Father in heaven. Wow. Sometimes I feel like I'm working overtime, but he's pleading for me. If you're tired and weak, it's time to overcome with resurrection power. If you are tempted, it's time to overcome with resurrection power. If you are depressed, let me get depressed, it's time to stand up in resurrection power. If you find yourself being defeated, it's time to claim resurrection power for your victory. For the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Resurrection power is mighty, it's amazing, and it is available, giving power to live for Christ. I mean, knows that God has given us the power to live for Christ. So many times over my ministry, people say, I just don't think I'll be able to live the Christian life. I don't think I can do that. And I tell them, you're right, you can. But he can do it through you. He can walk through us. N.T. Wright, in his book, Surprised by Hope, he said the resurrection completes the inauguration of God's kingdom. It is the decisive demonstration that God's kingdom really has been launched on earth as it is in heaven. And I like Michael Carr, who said, Jesus' death and resurrection, once and for all, should give us hope that we can never be forsaken and we can never be overlooked Amen. by God. Thank you. Jesus Christ is risen today. And we have been made alive in Him. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about being alive for God. Amen. I've got an exercise for you to do. Uh, Jerry's going to hand out. You probably have enough for most everybody here, I think. And Something look on from Brother Marshall. I put this together a good number of years ago, and some of the people here may have remembered this, or you may not. But I have this in my bathroom, because I know I'm going to be going there on a regular basis. <laughs> you either got to put it on your refrigerator. Or in the bathroom. I know you're going to go to the refrigerator, and I know you're going to the bathroom. So she, my little wife, put it right there in the bathroom, right on the wall. I know it's not fancy decor, but it's good stuff. We're going to do this again this morning. Give you time to get get them out to everybody. This Easter Sunday, 3, 20, 31, 24, by the resurrection power of God, according to Romans 8, 11, I make this declaration, that's where you put your name. Don't put somebody else's name, put your name in. Are you ready? Are you getting close to 
get ready. You gotta, you gotta get your lungs working. You gotta speak a little bit to make this do good. By the resurrection power of God, according to Romans 8 11, never again will I confess I can't, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What's the word? It's never again. It's right on your paper there, okay? What's the words? Will I confess lack? For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What's the word? Amen. Will I confess fear? For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. What's the word? Amen. Never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith. For God has given to every man the measure of faith. What's the word? Will I confess weakness? For the Lord is the strength of my life. The people who know their God will display strength and take action. What's the word? Will I confess supremacy of Satan over my life? For greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. What's the word? Will I confess defeat? For God always leads us in his triumph in Christ. What's the word? Will I confess defeat? For God always leads us in triumph in Christ. We need that twice. What's the word? Will I confess lack of wisdom? For Christ is made unto me wisdom from God. What's the word? Will I confess sickness? For with his stripes I am healed. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. What's the word? Will I confess worries and frustrations? For I am casting all my cares upon him who careth for me. What's the word? Will I confess bondage? For the Spirit of the Lord there is liberty. Never again. Will I confess condemnation? For there is now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Never again. I mean, we'll put that somewhere where you can look at it on a regular basis. Let's sing this song together, can we? Stand together.
in the New Testament, try this sometime. Go anywhere in the New Testament, in your Bible, and circle anywhere it says us, we, and you. Circle it. Us, we, and you. Circle those places in the New Testament. And beside that, every place it says us, we, and you, tells you who you are in Christ and what you have in Him. Everywhere. You ask us, you and you, serve it. That's what you have. And that's who you are in Christ. It's a portrait of who you are and gives you an idea of all that God has for you. He has storehouses. You may not have even gone in yet. But He has for you. And start checking out those 1,700 ifs because it can make a big difference in those 7,000 promises. God, love you on Resurrection Day. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you and give you praise in this house today. I thank you that we can believe in our hearts, we can confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose again. And Father, we do that today again and again. We confess that you are the Lord. We confess in our hearts that you did die on the cross for our sins and our sins. And we knew, we are aware that you rose from the dead. And we give you praise. In Christ's name, we honor you today. And we give you honor, glory, and praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We have a gift for you. And this beautiful young lady is going to go around and share. She's one of our teenagers here. She's going to share the gift with you.